Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So, a few weeks back, I made the first installment in a mini-series of mine that I called the Level Spotlight series, where I took a look at five levels of my choosing that I had something to say about. These levels could be from a variety of styles and creators, and there is no rule to determine what makes it on the list. It's all just levels that I have thoughts on that I would like to share. Well, as you can probably tell from the title, this video is going to be the second part in this series, where I will take a look at five more levels that I want to talk about in depth. You guys seemed to really enjoy the last one, and I had a blast making it, so I decided to continue the series. If you guys haven't seen part one, that will be linked in the description if you want to check it out and get an idea of the video formatting. But yeah, with all that said, let's get into the levels. Okay, so to kick it off, we have Nightlife by Para. Para is truly an amazing creator, and they've recently gotten a ton of recognition via their new extreme demon Cold Sweat, but I personally think that they're much more unknown and slept on level. Nightlife is the superior. Nightlife really is a masterpiece. It has atmosphere, charm, gorgeous decoration, a great song, fitting gameplay, and just about everything else you could want in a level. I always talk about atmosphere being such a key element to making a level that stands out, and Paris truly really knows what they are doing when building the levels of immersiveness that make a notable level. Nightlife has some very interesting ideas, as it tells the story of going on a late night acid trip, a concept that has never really been explored in a GD level which I think is a major reason why this level is so unique and awesome. I'm sure there have been nods at this sort of concept before, but no one has done it like Para has, and I think the competition is minimal in this department. The level starts out simply, with the player entering what appears to be a city with flashing lights, dynamic backgrounds, and subtle but gorgeous colors. The gameplay for this section was actually made by Revan Tuli, not Para, which is an interesting thing to consider. I think the first section sets the stage for the level brilliantly. It feels homey and fits perfectly for the song, and it feels like you are out late at night in a bustling community. The yellow and black building designs are amazing, and the very subtle but nonetheless important flashes of color in the windows really set apart the city design from all other attempts in GD creating. The moving buildings in the background also really give this part an edge that makes it so unique, and they really complement the design. The amount of little easter eggs and designs in this part is awesome, and overall it is very atmospheric and starts the level off very nicely. However, the awesomeness doesn't stop here. The next part is probably my favorite in the level. You enter what appears to be a nightclub, with disco effects and rainbow colors. The pastels here are gorgeous, and their color choices in the pulsing blocks are beautiful. This level has some very interesting un and unique block structuring, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. To complement these features, there are some very cool effects in the background that match the part very well. The large effect structures that appear in the second half of this part at the top and the bottom of the screen are also amazing, as the colors that pulse here are so good and satisfying to look at. I think this section fits the song amazingly, and overall, the atmosphere and color choices are yet again unmatched. The next section is a slow monochrome robot with a simple yet effective design that hints at something to come. There are some key points of reference in this part. The chemical symbol that appears floating in the air is LSD which prompts the assumption that, while out at the nightclub, you took some sort of acid and you are about to face the consequences. The lamp and the minion that also float in the air are nods to the original city part, and I think this is a really cool feature that makes this part that much more special. The drop is up next, and this is the main attraction of the level. This is at the point where you finally embark on your acid trip, and the atmosphere, colors, and effects and overall feeling in this part are absolutely amazing. The pulsing rainbows are obviously representative of an acid trip, and the vibrant colors match so well with the song and build such a once-in-a-lifetime atmosphere. There are beautiful pulsing effects in the background, alongside a large rotating star. And though this part lacks block design, it all adds up to the final product that is this amazing section. However, the second half of the drop is even better in my opinion. The second half builds in the first in numerous ways, with a grid pattern and a second star being introduced into the custom background. There are some very cool gradient rainbow structures that complement the major blocks, and these really complete the structure design for me. At the final parts of the drop, there are nods back to the previous sections of the level, with the decoration flashing back to the original city and nightclub parts, which is such an awesome idea that signifies the end of your acid trip. Overall, the atmosphere in this part is absolutely incredible, and I genuinely adore this level. My only gripe is the sudden end, as the end screen flashes by a bit too quickly and it feels awkward, but that is a very small complaint, and in the grand scheme of things, this level is definitely one of the best that this game has ever seen. The passion that has gone into this project is very noticeable, and I love everything about this masterpiece. The concept, execution, and feeling that this level gives is unmatched, and this level will definitely go down in history as one of the most loved and memorable maps in the game.
The next level I would like to talk about is Innards by Kaido. What an amazing level. Ever since I saw this masterful creation, I have been in love with it. Of course, this level got big off of being what was to be the hardest thing ever verified, and it has lost a significant amount of relevancy now that it has been nerfed, but I think people overlook this level in terms of decoration. Innards has an amazing song, which is a big reason why I like this level so much, but it is also because of how amazingly this level capitalizes on the soundscapes that are presented in the music. The level starts off calm and tranquil, with the main colors revolving around black, white, and a very nice looking teal. These designs and decoration in this part are simple and definitely not original, but the atmosphere is absolutely amazing. The peaceful feeling that this part gives is so nice, and the slow gameplay complements it so well. I have seen a lot of people say that the decoration at this part is Generic 2.1, and though they might be right in some aspects, I think this is one of the only times the Generic 2.1 design works incredibly fittingly and is well made. The level speeds up a bit at the next part, and the teal pulses slowly turn into red, signifying something to come. The level then glitches out with the music, and it comes back with a faster and more sinister atmosphere, with the teal colors that rang to the beginning being replaced entirely by red. This all fits very well with the song, and a major reason why I like this level so much is how the progression of the music fits so well with how the level is presented. The red color that is introduced ebbs in and out of being a crimson and a light pink, and I think this gives the level a weird, fleshy feeling that fits with the atmosphere perfectly. The gory eyeballs and blood splatters that fill the design in this part make it feel eviler than the first, and the song speeds up as you enter the gory maze, complete with a boss fight and many little creatures that try to kill you. I think the way Kaido uses glow and it sets him apart from almost all other creators, as he rarely uses blending. Instead, he leaves the glow as it is without blending it, making it stand out more and giving it this weird, fleshy, but effective theme that I think works incredibly well with the song and the atmosphere. The level ends very suddenly after the boss fight, with the blocks flashing a very cool color combo to the music, and you escaping the hell of gore and flesh that the level was throwing at you. But I think this sudden end works nicely with the song, and though I don't usually like abrupt endings, this level is an exception. Kaido's approach to making feelings in his levels is truly one of a kind, and the way he made Innard's atmosphere progress from such a calm, tranquil state to an intense and sinister environment is something that I continue to marvel at. Innards has always been one of my favorite levels, and though I can see why some people might not like it, I hope you can now see the reason why I love Kaido's building style and mindful design choices that were made when making this level. Innards is a one-of-a-kind build, and it will go down as one of my favorite levels, and hopefully one of your guys' favorite levels of all time. For my next pick for this episode, I have Black Blizzard by Carmel. Black Blizzard had always been a big extreme demon, as everything Carmel makes somehow turns into a community favorite level. But unlike some other demons he has released, Black Blizzard is actually deserving of its praise and recognition. Made in 2.0 but released in 2.1, Black Blizzard was meant to be Kermal's hardest and best level. And though it didn't end up being his hardest due to some drama, it definitely turned out to be his greatest work in my eyes. Everything about this level is brilliant. The atmosphere, the song choice, the theming, you name it. I always think it's noteworthy to consider that this was basically Creo's big first exposure to the GD community, and from Dimension, he would go on to capitalize on the Newgrounds and GD music scene. Kermal somehow always finds the best original Newgrounds artists and songs. The level starts out very calmly, with a slow mini cube with very gimmicky gameplay, following to suit to Kermal's usual style. There isn't much detail at this part, but it appears as that is intentional, as the slow beginning with subtle falling of the dark ashes in the background really sets the stage nicely for the level. There is some nice usage of glow in the custom background that gives it some depth, and though the block design is very simple and minimal in this section, the atmosphere is chill and filled with indifferent premonition. As the song starts to build, we enter the next section of the level, where the color scheme is primarily grey instead of black and white. There is an awesome and original effect where two orb decorations move from orb to orb to the music that is present at this part, and I really like what this does with the feeling that the section gives off. There are some very subtle visual effects in the foreground, with what appears to be gathering wind moving across the screen. And though there is again very simple and minimal block design, it gets the job done. If you look closely at the structures, you will notice that they are very dynamic, as they move to the music and give a very windy atmosphere, which is aided by the effects and glow that are used in the background. Overall, I would say this part feels like it is building up to something, as it feels like you are caught in a rising storm. This is exactly what Carmel was going for, as the next part is the release of the Black Blizzard, the main attraction of the level. Of course, it is not hard to see that the theme and premise of this level is a dust storm, but the way the level builds up to this eventual release is really something else. The drop is definitely my favorite part in the level, 
You are now in the midst of the intense storm, and the saxophone with the music fits so incredibly well with the atmosphere that this section gives off. I really applaud Kermal for his visualization of the song in this department, as the way the level and the music fit together really blows me away. Most of the decoration in this part is black, with some white and grey details here and there and a grey sky in the background. You can see black specks of dust flying crazily across the screen, and the black blizzard itself in the background, swirling insanely to the music. However, it only gets better from here. As the level enters the second half of the drop, all hell breaks loose. Black dust flies across the screen even more than before, and there are so many new concepts and colors introduced. This second half of the drop builds on the first very expertly, and it is one of the main reasons I love this level. It all builds up to this moment, the sudden explosion of the dust storm. The monochrome element to this part is so beautiful, and there's something about the white and black that he's used that is just so gorgeous and intense at the same time. The rotating spotlight effect in the background is amazing visualization of the new melody that is introduced to this part in the song, and with the increased detail on the mountains in the background and black snowflakes falling through the sky, this part has an atmosphere and beauty that I honestly think is one of my favorite parts in any extreme demon ever. This part has the most block design out of any other section in the level, and I think that's intentional. The block design gradually gets more cluttered and filled as the level goes on. After this final intense section, the level slowly fades away with a slow, tranquil wave in the ship section, reminiscent of the beginning of the level, but this time with elements of grey and white that were built on by other parts in the level. The visual effect in the background is amazing at this part, and the slowly falling dust signifies the passing of the black blizzard in the ending of the level. As you clear the final area, it all fades away with the music, and is a fitting end to such an incredible level. This is without a doubt Kermal's best work, and the thought behind every little aspect of it is evident. It really blows me away that this was made in 2.0, and I genuinely think that it's the best level that was made back then. It still holds up to standards today as one of the most beautiful extreme demons. The atmosphere, theming, gameplay, name, and song are all top-notch in this masterpiece, and I am confident that this level won't be forgotten. It is a fan favorite for good reason, and it will definitely go down as one of the best works in this game's history. My second to last level is definitely something you were not expecting. Infected Caverns by Spamdrew and Trix33 is a 1.9 style extreme demon that is rather unnoticed and glossed over, but in my opinion, this is one of, if not the most well done 1.9 style demon, if only topped by Tartarus. This level originated from the 1.9 private server, which is why it is styled like it is, and it honestly looks amazing as a 1.9 level. Not only does it hold up to standards with only 1.9 decoration, it genuinely looks like something that was made in 1.9, which is what blows me away. The way the decorators in this level managed to successfully mix 2.1 standards for gameplay and decoration, and turn them into this level, which somehow shares both 2.1 decoration and gameplay elements alongside very 1.9x styles too. This is an incredibly hard thing to do, and I think they did an amazing job with it. The level is toxic themed, which isn't something we saw of much in 1.9, so it's very interesting to see how it would have been executed if it was more prominent back then. It is a very hard level, currently holding the number one place in the 1.9 demons list, and it is known for its infamous UFO sections that are absurdly difficult. This level starts out calmly with the music, and it has some really nice 1.9 decoration and gameplay styles. When you enter the first ship, the song starts to pick up, and this section manages to pull off atmosphere so well for a 1.9 demon that it honestly blows me away. After you enter a neon green ship section with mostly black designs, you begin the main claim to fame of the level, the UFO section. This part uses a red and green color scheme, with black to complement it. The decorations flash from green to red, which is a very nice concept that gives off a very threatening feel. I honestly think that the decoration and gameplay at these UFO sections are amazing for 1.9, and they not only look great, but they truly feel like something that was made back then, which I think is a key point that a lot of 1.9-esque levels miss nowadays. They try to make things look good for 2.1 standards, but I think the point of making a 1.9 style level is to try to make something that really feels like it was made in 1.9 which this level pulls off incredibly well. After the first bit of the UFO, you enter a more neon green and black section with some really nice effects that work super well with the music. These effects are absolutely amazing for 1.9, and the visualization of the music is just about as good as it gets for the limitations of the editor. After you go through a slow part, you enter a final section similar to the beginning of the UFO, where the red and green color combo is reintroduced to give the level a feeling of completion. There's not much else to say about this level, it ends quite nicely and overall it has some very good decoration for 1.9 that honestly feels like 1.9 decoration, which is why it is so charming. This level has been quietly one of my favorite demons ever since I saw it, 
and the atmosphere and decoration are perfection. They're right where it should be for a 1.9 style level. Not so 2.1 to the point that it doesn't even feel like a 1.9 level anymore, but not so outdated that it doesn't have any charm or feeling behind it. All in all, this is a very good level for the reasons I just stated, and though I can see why people might not have expected this or rank or really agree, I hope you can see where I'm coming from about why I think this level is so awesome. Anyways, with infected caverns out of the way, let's move on to the final level on this list. The final inclusion on this list is a level that I have loved ever since I set my eyes on it. Killbot is truly a one of a kind level. There is nothing like it before it was released. And though it has inspired some other stylistically similar levels, there will never be another level with such an amazing atmosphere and unique intensity. Killbot is an incredibly original tech and malware themed level that has a color scheme of green, red, and black. This color scheme works amazingly with what the level is trying to accomplish. This is one of the reasons I love this level so much. Everything about it just works so well together to give the feeling that the level is going for. The song choice, decoration style, colors, effects, and even gameplay all collaborate to make one of the most atmospheric and intense experiences in Geometry Dash history. The level is heavily based on memory gameplay, which, combined with the flashing effects, makes it one of the most difficulty memory demons in an extremely unique level. The level starts off with a ball section that sets the stage by saying how it is downloading killbot.exe, which, according to the level's lore, is a virus that installs itself on your computer and slowly drives the user to the brink of insanity. After killbot.exe is downloaded, you enter a spider section that builds up the song as the virus is installed, and at the drop of the song, the malware is installed and lets itself loose on your computer. Before I get into all that, I just want to recognize this tiny little effect right here before the drop. The text sync works incredibly with the music, and it is genuinely one of my favorite effects in a level ever. Anyway, the drop is insane. It's pure memory gameplay, and the effects that epileptically flash across your screen are some of the most absurd I've ever seen. As you travel through the level, the flashing gets more intense, and there's text and artwork that flashes across the screen as you progress. The theming of this is absolutely incredible, and the brutal atmosphere it gives off is unmatched. The level continues through a very difficult memory duel, and eventually you reach a slow point, which is a break from what is about to ensue. The section that is right after the slow duel is by far my favorite in the level. It's so incredibly intense with the music, and the way the effects suddenly stop to the song and you do a bit of straight fly before you are thrown right back into it is so brutal and powerful. It is so fitting for the end of the level, and that last UFO is one of the hardest parts, signifying how the difficulty doesn't stop right up until the very end. The melody that builds in the background of the song is so gorgeously intense with the gameplay and the effects, and as it gradually gets louder and louder, you finally clear the final UFO and escape the madness that is Killbot. The end screen is very simple but effective. There's something very ominous and prophetic about it, as somehow your struggle isn't yet over. All in all, this level is chill-worthy. The intensity and magic of every aspect of this masterpiece working together for the monstrous atmosphere it gives off is something that I continue to marvel at every time I watch it. I sincerely doubt this level is fun to play, but that just adds to the feeling it intends to give off. It's not meant to be fun, or an enjoyable level. It's meant to be an incredible challenge that only the most determined and willful players can clear. Everything about this level works together amazingly well, and I love this level just as much as when I was first blown away by it, if not more. I can understand why people won't like this level and might not agree with my opinions on it, especially because of the nature of the creator. But to me it doesn't matter if he was the worst person on the planet, he made a masterpiece, and I respect his artistic talent at the very least. I hope you guys can see why I like this level so much, and I hope you all agree. I think this might be the most controversial entry in today's episode, so feel free to tell me if you disagree and why. But, all in all, to me, Killbot is a beautifully evil masterpiece that will continue to be known as one of the best memory extreme demons in this game's history. Alright, that's all the levels I have for today's episode. If you guys disagree with what I had to say for some of these, I understand, so feel free to tell me what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed the second installment of the series, and if you want me to continue it, I will gladly make a part 3, as I have even more levels I would like to talk about. So yeah, if you guys want to see more of this, just tell me, and I'll see what I can do. I really hope you all liked hearing about my thoughts on these levels, and I hope you can all now recognize the genius of them a little bit more. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. If you like this or any of my other videos, feel free to sub, but no pressure. With all that said, I hope you learned something, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.